Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to go all the way up forward to the sand locker and show you a few of the spaces along the way. It's been a while since we've done any exploration videos. Uh, so we're going to start this one here in the anchor windlass room. We've talked about the anchor windlass room before, and we've uh, and this space is the furthest forward space that you can come into as a visitor to the ship. If you wanted to go any further forward than this, you would have to get a curator's tour. Check the link in the description for more information about the curator's tour. Let's go check some stuff out. Here are the actual windlasses, uh, the equipment leading up to what you see topside. Here's one of the chain pipes. And this trunk right here leads all the way down to the chain locker. Now you've seen another video where we climbed down that. There are a number of storerooms as you go down through here. As we go forward, we're in a lot of the uh, deck division storage areas, the, the bosun's lockers, if you will. And this ship has a, a fair number of these around. Uh, and in some instances, spare parts and other things are left. And uh, in other cases, racks are completely empty. And you can tell from the state of this compartment that uh, we're outside of the regular tour route. Uh, and you can also get an indication of how little climate control there is in here. Notice all of the popping paint that's peeling off of the walls. That's because uh, without any heating or air conditioning up here, you get vast temperature fluctuations, which causes slight expansion and contraction in the steel, which pops the paint off. Check out the size of these mooring lines that uh, are down here on the deck. It is possible, I've heard people speculate that these mooring lines were used to tow the battleship from Bremerton to the state of New Jersey when she was opened as a museum. And they certainly look hefty enough for that. You'll also notice some spare links of anchor chain. Each link of chain weighs 123 pounds. There's about 1,100 feet of it per anchor. So, normally, this is as far forward as you could get on second deck. To get into any of the other spaces forward of this, you would have to climb up a ladder to main deck and then go over, and there are some hatches in main deck that will give you access to these spaces. When the ship was put in uh, mothballs to help with the dehumidification and ventilation of these spaces, the Navy, or the contractors working for the Navy, cut doorways in here so that the uh, dehumidifier that's in the windless room could pump through to all of these spaces and you don't have to open any of the exterior hatches to get stuff down there. And again, we're on second deck. This goes down another five stories below us. So you're not only ventilating uh, the spaces here, you're also ventilating and dehumidifying the five stories of peak tanks or storage compartments or offices that are all down in this part of the ship. So let's keep going. So this is a flammable liquid locker. And you'll notice that there is a fire suppression system built into this space. You can see the piece of steel that was cut out of the bulkhead right here. So they could be replaced if needed. There are other flammable materials stored uh, below here in some of the storage rooms. So it's interesting that specifically the flammable liquids are here. But up forward of the armored part of the ship, uh, it's relatively safe. If something hits here and causes it to burn, Nobody's in danger. So in here, you can see that we've got a uh, ladder coming down from the main deck, as promised. The flammable liquid locker. Again, the door we came through wouldn't have been there. So it is normally behind this watertight door. And I believe if you go down there, you start to, uh, you start to get into the paint locker and other stuff. Yeah, so the paint locker's down there among some other storage, and then flammable liquids are up here. This is where the 
um, CO2 uh, or halon suppression system would be racked here and then pipes into the flammable liquid locker there and probably down below to the paint locker as well. So let's keep going forward. So this space, which we now use for storing our signal flags, uh, was the paint mixing room. So you would bring paint up from the paint locker below here uh, and mix it. The, the ship uses a lot of two-part epoxies that you have to mix together before you use. Uh, and during World War II, there would have probably been a whole lot of uh, mixing your own uh, formulas to get the right colors, as opposed to just getting the colors today. I'm not sure if all of the railing stanchions stored here are because this is where they originally stored them, or if somebody in the museum era just found this as a place to stow them. But maybe the bosun's locker would make more sense than the paint mixing room where you've got shelves for storing yeah. paint you're mixing, presumably. Uh, here's an interesting feature. This is the Paravane wench power control box, I imagine. Uh, the other Iowas may have retained their Paravane equipment from mine sweeping. Battleship New Jersey had hers cut off. Uh, so it's interesting that that was retained. Maybe there was some intention to replace it, or uh, maybe it's just something that slipped by. Again, this suite of rooms and the spaces under us are only accessed from a main deck hatch with the exception of the door that was cut. And here we've got another door that was cut. Ooh. The first thing I want you to look at in here is that janky ladder. Notice that at some point, the ladder was mounted slightly differently and they cut it off and reinstalled what you see here today. Here we have access to the peak tank below us. And otherwise, this looks like it was just used as deck division storage. Again, if you look up there, you can see the plate that was cut out of uh, the wall. And I'm not sure if that was from the aft bulkhead here or the forward bulkhead there where we're going next. Here is the sand locker. We're now in the furthest forward part of a ship you can be. Notice the, the curve of the hull and all the framing here. And you can see some of the castings which form the hall's pipes. We already talked about how the hall's pipe is, I don't know, 50 feet aft of us in the windlass room. And uh, that's where the chain goes down to the chain locker. Well, it comes up, it runs across the main deck and it comes out these holes, and that's where the anchor is. On the other side of this big doubler plate, which you can see here, it's uh, close to an inch thick. So we are now as far forward as you can go inside the ship. Here is the casting for the uh, tow line that comes out of the bullnose at the front of the ship. And uh, yeah, so here we are. So uh, you may be able to see that there is a lipstick impression right here, like a kiss mark. Uh, and there's another one here. I have absolutely no idea uh, what the deal is with that. Who came up here and did that? So uh, why did we have a sand locker on the battleship? Well. There's a link in the description below to a video we recently released on holy stoning the decks. So uh, the sand forms an abrasive when you're sanding the deck. Uh, and so this space was intended to store that. Uh, and it's so darned inconvenient that even when they weren't holy stoning the deck, they, they never converted it to any other use. So the aftmost compartment in this space is frame number two. Where you are, the viewer, is frame number one. And then we've got 
frame number uh, zero right here in front of you. And then they become negative frame numbers as you go forward. So this would be frame number one, uh, negative one. I think this is negative one and a half, negative two, and so on to the bow. Frame spacing on a battleship is four feet. Uh, it tends to be two feet on smaller ships. Uh, we have negative frames forward of our uh, water line, forward of where the hull leaves the water. The ship has a very severe and pronounced curve. Uh, and so anything forward of that is a negative number. So the ship has a length of 860 feet at the waterline, but 887 feet overall, which mostly comes from the bow curve. So thanks for watching this short exploration video with us. What are some other spaces on the ship you'd like to see us explore? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Uh, in particular, the donations that viewers have made to the museum over the last year has allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week. And we really appreciate you allowing us to make this a larger part of our jobs. If you would like to continue to support us, there's a link in the comments section down below uh, that'll allow you to donate. Also remember to like, share, and subscribe because uh, now that we're putting out so many videos, you want to be notified whenever those go live. Thanks for watching.